So now I'd like to turn to Mr. Wyatt Tessary Lallier, five minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for the honour of inviting me. AI Governance and Safety Canada is a multi-stakeholder, not-for-profit organisation and uh, of a community of people across country. Our starting point is the question, what can we do in Canada and from Canada to ensure that the future created by AI is a beneficial one? In November, we tabled a brief which detailed recommendations for the AI and Data Act, and we are currently preparing a second brief in response to the Minister's amendments. Witnesses in previous sessions have already discussed the risks associated with current systems, so I'll turn my remarks today to the security and economic challenges of AI in the future, as well as the time constraints we face in preparing for it and what it all means for ADA. Start by stating the obvious. With human intelligence staying roughly the same and AI getting better by the day, it is only a matter of time before AI outperforms us in all domains. This includes ones like reasoning, caring for people, and navigating real-world complexity where we currently hold a clear advantage. Building this level of AI is the explicit goal of frontier labs like OpenAI, Google DeepMind, and more recently, Meta. The first major implication of smarter than human AI is for public safety due to the weaponization and control problems. The weaponization problem is straightforward. If a human being can design or use weapons of mass destruction, then a smarter than human AI system can too. This means that in the hands of the wrong people, smarter than human AI systems could be used for unprecedented harm. The control problem comes from the fact that a system that is smarter than us is by definition one that can outcompete us, which means that if an advanced AI system, through accident or poor design, starts to interpret human beings as a threat and take actions against us, we will not be able to stop it. Moreover, there is a growing body of evidence, backed by research at the world's top AI labs, suggesting that without proper safety precautions, AI systems above a certain threshold of intelligence may behave adversarially by default. This is why hundreds of leading AI experts signed a statement last year saying that mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority. The second major implication is for labor. As AI approaches the point where it can do everything we can only better, including designing robots that can outperform us physically, our labor will be increasingly less useful. The economic pressures are such that a company that doesn't eventually replace its CEO, board and employees with smarter than human AI systems and robotics will likely be a company that loses out to others that do. If we don't manage these developments wisely, increasing numbers of people will get left behind. I want to be clear, however, that AI is also a very positive force and that we can't let fear uh, take, take us over. <clears throat> the world we create with advanced AI could be a far more peaceful, prosperous and equitable one than the one we currently have. It's just that as discussed so far, AI, and in particular smarter than human AI, represents a tsunami of change and there's a lot we need to get right. How much time do we have? The reality is we're already late in the game. Even the rudimentary AI that we have today is causing issues with everything from biased employment decisions to enabling cybercrime to spreading misinformation. But the greatest risks come from AI that is reliably smarter than us, and that AI could be coming soon. Many leading experts expect human levels of AI in as little as two to five years, and the engineers at the Frontier Labs that we've talked to are saying there's even a five to 10% chance of it being built in 2024. While accurate predictions about the future are impossible, the trends are clear enough that a responsible government needs to be ready. So what can we do? In our white paper, Governing AI, A Plan for Canada, we outline five categories of action needed from government, including establishing a central AI agency, investing in AI governance and safety research, championing global talks, and launching a national conversation on AI. Legislative action is the fifth and essential pillar. The main reasons Canada needs an AI and Data Act are first, to limit current and future harms by banning or regulating high-risk use cases and capabilities. Second, to create a culture of ethics, safety, and accountability in the public and private sectors that can scale up as AI technology advances. And third, to provide government with the capacity, agility, and oversight to adequately protect Canadians and respond to developments in the field as they arise. The Minister's amendments are a good step in the right direction, and I'd be happy to provide feedback on them. To conclude, while the challenges we face with AI are daunting and the timelines to address them very tight, constructive action to govern the risks and harness the opportunities is possible, and bills like C27 are an essential piece of the puzzle. As the wheels of history turn around us, one thing is clear. Success on this global issue will require every country to step up to the challenge, and Canada's on us. Thank you. Merci. Il me fera plaisir de répondre à vos questions. I'll be pleased to answer your questions.